Winning Plays is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Winning Plays, back yet again as the Celtics drop their second straight game one of the Eastern Conference playoffs to the Heat in what was almost a carbon copy of the 2022 Eastern Conference Finals. My name is Brian Robb, joined by Chris Forsberg of NBC Sports Boston to relive the past here because that's what we do with this team at this point. It's have, uh have I been back. on after have I been on after a win? Right. You know, that's a good question. Not during this run, probably not. I'd have to go back and check the tape. I, mean, I should just re-rack. Should I re-rack the like what we talked about after game one last year? We should just Yeah. That. I'm and, and I don't know. I don't I don't remember being this despondent after game one last year. I keep saying my love I think it's just because we we've, we've been so mad so often that I've I've lost the ability to put it in proper context. I'm sure I was angry. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure I don't know. But these these guys just keep finding new ways to to make me mad. And uh, even though I know the script is like they'll be great in game two, uh, it does not take away that in the moment it is infuriating. So I agree from just like a Celtics from knowing that this is what they had in front of them and letting it get to this point again is what it is. I'll say this right now, just out of the out of the Ooh. gate. Ooh, we got a hot take coming. I don't have a hot take coming. I'm just giving Miami the respect like Miami's wa- lost w- two games all playoffs when Jimmy Butler's been on the floor. They lost That's pretty one nice. of their games to the Knicks when Butler was like resting in game two there. Mm-hmm. And other than that, they like steamrolled a Bucks team in five and not steamrolled the Knicks, but like took care of them hardly. With that said, that game last night, like I don't know if they've played as well as they've did. I know Butler's played better than for sure. We saw in game one last night, but as far as the full team effort where you're just like, literally everyone shot above 50%. Everyone did what they needed to do. And I thought they played really well in the first half. And so that's when I was like, wow, the, the Celtics got ahead yeah, 12, yeah. at halftime. Like they, they dodged the bullet there because they, you know, avoided the, that that flurry and no, they had another gear to go to, which is kind of kind of just like nuts to me at this point with how they're doing it. All fair, all valid points. And Jimmy was really good, good 37 and seven the nine. And yet, like, does anyone walk away from that game and and, and not think that the Celtics were no, just of course not. you know, idiots for large stretches of this game? Of course not. Like did that still <laughs> them playing to like that level, the Celtics are still fully capable of beating that team. Yep. Like, and probably should do it eight, nine times out of ten on their home floor, even though maybe the Celtics should, that? They, should <laughs> they start giving away the road road like be like, hey, you, we don't want home court. You guys got no. this. We, we we are much better off just going up against backs against the wall on the road in these in these the start of these series. Next year, they should just try for the eighth seed, do the Miami <laughs> route where you just kind of coast through the regular season and then have to fight through every round, and maybe they they'd be better off. What? Well, uh, all right, we, that's enough Miami credit. What do you, could, yeah, like, yeah, what, do you what, what are you most mad about? Oh, I, it's I mean, it has to be the turnovers because I think that's the that's the game. Mm. 10 turnovers I, in the second half, easy points left and right. And for a Miami team that was getting what they want in the half court, regardless, if you like start the engines, take bad shots, make bad passes, let Kevin Love get his home run pass on. Like there's let Bam run the point. Like it was just a lot of it. And to be Oscar, the other thing, like watching them fill that third quarter, like they just weren't getting their ass back either. Like yeah. guys on the team. And it's kind of across the board. Some surprising names like Marcus a couple of times, um, Tatum a couple of times playing double bigs. It's obviously that's going to come up there too, but it's not just like, Oh yeah. Miami's like they're running, but the Celtics were not, as Jalen put it, they, they kind of handled it like a regular season game and they they only stopped the bleeding before it got out of control. Yeah. And so, look, we'll, I, and I'm guilty of it as well. We'll default to like, how does Joe not save them from themselves in that third quarter? And yet the totality of that half suggests that it's just as much on the players. And, you know, for me, it comes back to the superstars and especially this time of year. Like, I get that. So, uh, like, 
it, it, for me, it comes down to Jason and Jalen and, and, and being better in the spot, uh, small, even smart, you know, who was great in the first half directing this whole thing. But I thought really just, I kept wondering if he was injured and I know he left the court for a little bit. Did he ever say last night if, if he was, if something was bothering him? No, he didn't. I wasn't asked and he never addressed it. It's, it's he interesting. I mean, I, asked about I, the armor, I, that was it. I, I kind of forgotten too in, in, in the aftermath because you're just so, you know, your head spinning from the totality of their idiotness and in those moments. But um, yeah, I just, I, I just thought it was bad all around. Like, I, I don't know how you're that crisp to end the first half and then just that flat and that bad overall and just can never quite catch yourself. Now, certainly the turnovers are at the end of the game infuriating because that's when they finally started getting stops and they just couldn't get out of their own way. And I mean, some of those, like Jimmy jumped a couple passes, but I mean, the two Tatum travels were just pathetic. And so I don't know. I just, I, have we, have we ever seen a level as much of a of a sort of intensity roller coaster or a, or a focus roller coaster? Like I, I always, maybe I just get so caught up in the whole idea of like good teams are just good in those moments and they win close games and they're always sort of like keeping themselves in line. This one just seems so much more volatile than any other sort of championship level team that that I can remember. It is, and it's a. And this is a situation where they can't, for as like bad as the Sixers were in a lot of these situations, like the Heat are not that team. The yeah. Heat are the exact opposite of that team. So it's like, you got to go and take it in those spots. And the Celtics have not shown the, the ability to do that during much of this postseason in these close games. So that either means, A, you have to blow these teams out, which they're fully capable of doing. But doing that four times in a series is, is not easy either. Like you're probably gonna have a couple closes, and, and I guess last year is. I mean, last night was the first example of that. Where, yeah, they got down to five and four in the middle of that fourth quarter, and then they were stuck. Then they didn't score for four minutes. Um, and then four at minutes. that point, that's Jimmy had to hit another sh- enough shots to to kind of put them over the hump. And that's what I go back to is is as much as I'm mad in that moment that Joe wasn't able to catch them. And I think we're all sitting there as armchair quarterbacks and it's easy to look back and say, should have called the timeout. And I still think he should have, you know, the players did nothing to to help the cause there late. And uh, some of those possessions, it's just, it's just as you open this whole episode, PTSD, like we, we saw this last year and they just haven't been able to get any better at it. Did Joe just rev- like, Joe is the opposite of Ime in terms of defending his players, not mm. saying anything, like barely ever saying a negative thing about them in the post game. I think that's that's his biggest problem. Like, I he should he called more timeouts in the third quarter. Yes, wouldn't have mattered. Probably not based on this team's track record. Since I imagine Ime called plenty of third quarter, plenty of timeouts in that third quarter last year. Um, <laughs> but Joe at this point should just like go nuts in a press conference just to, to put these guys on guard. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now, new customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, you got to get the app. The app's the way to go. It is so easy to use. You get great promotions every day with the app. It's safe and secure and you get paid instantly. How about that? Instant cash with the FanDuel app. There's no better place to bet all your playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 plus in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issue is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 
4700 or visit chaosgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Visit www.mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY at 467369 in New York, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming, or visit www.1800gambler.net in West Virginia. Now let's get back to the show. Because it'd be pride. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> usually I can do to, whatever I want. It, it goes back to, like, this is what drives me nuts about this team is they're so set in their ways. Like, Joe is going to not call timeouts. He's not going to call out his players. He's going to justify that they were good in the first, second, and fourth quarter and say that they just need to be a little bit more locked in. And it causes us to lose our minds. Now he's being consistent and he's and 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 maybe that's the way you need to approach it when you have a, a volatile team that you know is just prone to these things. But yeah, like it we keep saying it. Like if you keep doing it, something needs to change, right? Like something has to shake you from your doldrums. And I've, what 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 the way he's approached it so far hasn't done it. And so I do think, you know, sometimes you just have to be the adult in the room and and whether it's the timeout, whether it's calling them out, whether it's, you know, doing it behind the scenes and maybe we'll hear in the aftermath that he like came into practice and threw another clipboard and, and it's just, you got to save this team from itself. And uh, that's on everybody. Everybody has to to figure out why these issues continue to crop up. Because I go back to it, B-Rob, and I, I know we've said it like a hundred times. Like, I'm sick of saying it on my podcast. I'm sick of saying it on your podcast. It's going to bite them in the ass at some point. And that is my my biggest concern is that everyone said last year, well, you know, not a big deal. You got to the finals. Yeah, and then it caught up with you. All that time, all that extra action, all that. And I do think there's just they're just continually playing with fire here. Uh, and maybe that bites you in this round or maybe it bites you next round or I don't know, or maybe I'll just sit here afterward and as we're talking about a parade saying, okay, never bit them, but I don't suspect that will be the case. They need to be a whole lot sharper to, uh, to make this a non storyline. Yeah. You don't have a center who's playing at 70 or 80% in this series. You don't have James Harden and his track record involved. You have the opposite of James Harden involved and you have a bunch of just like scrappers and, if you look like looking ahead to game two now, looking ahead to how this series is going to go, like the Heat have six guys that can legit play in this series. Kevin Love hit some shots, but he played 16 minutes in game one. It wouldn't surprise me if he's out of the starting line playing in this series, but he's going to be playing token minutes all right. season long because that's just what he is. Same for Cody Zeller. Mm. Duncan Robinson, really, he'll be there. They'll, they'll try I mean, him out for a couple of days. Just think about what you just said. Think about the three players you I know, just right. listed off. And the, Celtics, and the Celtics could not get anything going offensively in crunch time. And I know those guys weren't necessarily. They weren't on the floor there. for a lot of crunch time, but, but still. So yes. but when you're getting your doors handed to you by by Kayla Martin, by Lowry, who turned back the clock, by Bam and Jimmy, we know they can do it. But Strews well, has a monster second half, too, and Gabe Vincent. Like, those are the six guys, and they... And right now, Joe Mazzula and this staff has to be like, okay, we need to figure out how we're going to score against that group because that's how we're going to win this series when it matters. And they were able to do it in the first half. And then they kind of, on top of just falling apart defensively, which will be addressed there. And I think they, they came apart against them offensively too down the stretch. So I guess I'll start with you here for the, the Rob Al front line mm. moving forward in this series. We know they just went to it. Be kind of surprised if they go away from it in game two, given how much things wanted it there. And yeah. they had only one really bad stint as far as the start of the third quarter, but clearly making the subs there didn't necessarily help either. What, if you keep it, like what's your game plan in terms of protecting, does Rob just have to be better against Jimmy? Or like, how does, how does that work yeah. defensively? So, you know, it's funny. We were talking about it leaving last night. And I, I haven't checked the numbers yet, but I felt like, when Al was out there in the double big and they, I think this was it second half when they, when they kind of put more or maybe second quarter, they put more Al on Jimmy and it, it felt like it was okay. And it was kept Rob out of isolation. And, but I mean, it was going to be tough 
Mom's just got to be better in that instance. And so um, I felt like he, uh, and maybe because I'm, I'm skewed by the the good offensive output, the six for six, 14 points, all that. But I felt like Rob held up decent. Uh, it just comes down to they put you in a bind because they're going to have so much shooting on the floor. And like, there's only so much you can cheat. And uh, I, I, you know, I don't know what the right, what the right situation is here. We said it all, we all said it coming in. Can they stick with the double big against Miami and be competitive on both ends? And but I thought it would be more offensive side. Uh, I'm a little surprised that defensively it, it struggled the way it did. And um, I am eager to see it again and see it with 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 you know the benefit of a game tape and all that and and see what Joe dreams up. But um, I'm with you. I think they got to stick with it initially, but you, they also need to be ready to audible out of it pretty yeah. quickly if it if for whatever reason. And I mean, this goes back to one of my other issues is. Uh, did, did, did Grant do something? <laughs> like, are, are we sure? Like, did, did Grant like, like in jujitsu class or something? Like, are we sure he he he? Like, does Joe know he's available? It's it's a fascinating question. We'll probably well we'll figure out the answer probably in like four more years when Grant's playing for another team after he Fair. resigns. Um, but yeah, this is this is one given particularly given his history with Bam. Of right. trying to guard him and like being a pretty important part of those those last two series too. Like I was shocked to see Payne Pritchard get the the nod. I, I'm a big Payne Pritchard guy in terms of like I thought he should have even played more last series when they needed to mm-hmm. jump start the opposite times. But for them to go three point guards off the bench in this one, um, even before trying Grant was uh was startling to me. And it's something where I don't I I would be flabbergasted if if Grant stays on the bench going forward or because he provides a three point shooting you need. And based on how Butler is and Bam is, you know, kind of running the show for them. Like that's a decent way to potentially try to slow that down. And I, and I actually thought, I thought there would be, I thought that the rotation would be a little deeper in this series. I thought, I thought for me, it was either Hauser or Grant or maybe right. both. We're going to just see more time. And I just thought that was the way you could attack. Miami and if look if Miami wants to twist itself in a pretzel going at Hauser then so be it but at least he has size and at least he can compete but I mean I, I enjoy the Peyton Pritchard's experience too but it's more as the change up the uh, like the energy that you need or whatever and I just thought you know you you already got a situation where Jimmy's hunting out Rob in that situation well now Jimmy sees Peyton Pritchard out there and he's licking his chops and I, I think the data said he was only one of two against him or whatever but um yeah, I don't know. I just I I don't love that scenario against a team that has such size and and can really take advantage of that. I thought that was a little baffling. I'm I'm not sure what did Pritchard play like really well against them last year. This, again, I'm asking questions that I probably should have answers to already, but um, I don't think so. I feel like his best series came against like the Bucks um, right. in the playoffs. So I'm like I'm trying to think. I mean, I'll go up his. I kept I kept thinking like okay are they just trying to find something like can Peyton hold up because Brogdon has struggled defensively at times like well, I, I just I couldn't put my finger on like what the reasoning was behind Pritchard being the guy off the bench and for him to play twelve minutes when you know like he was he was okay in the first shift but I mean especially so he, on- he was okay six points per game forty four percent shooting thirty seven percent he he scored double digits points in games one, two, and four last year, but then in the games five through seven, only played 12 minutes total in those games. So he definitely, he disappeared as um, it kind of shifted to a 2-2 series. So that's one where... That's not encouraging. Yeah, right? I mean, so I it's, it is. It's one of the situations, yeah, like, we, we, and I, he actually was, is providing good ball pressure. To, defensively, you like him a lot more than Brogdon in this series as far as just like, not making not from the size standpoint, but just like not making dumb mistakes, like right from leaving Struce in the corner, making people work to get up over half court, exactly. And, just look, make, going through screens, etc. The Heat, based on the numbers this postseason, especially since the first round against Milwaukee, have not been a good half court offensive team. So if you can force them to work the ball up, get in low clock, you know it 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 taxes their offense. What we saw in the third quarter last night, where they're in transition and just making threes, is where they can gouge you. Um, so like that part of it, I get. I just you know, I also don't know, like last round, I was like, okay, you want to work hard and you want to make them bring the ball up the court and, you know, have to expend energy. I'm not sure you're trying to wear down Kyle Lowry 
I mean, he's going to get his, he's just going to do Kyle Lowry thing. So um, yeah, I'm just a little, a little baffled on, on exactly what they were looking for out of that, that sort of curveball. And the other thing was, I think they played multiple lineups last night that had not played more than a single minute this year. And most of them were those Pritchard lineups, right. but you know, this is the second straight game. game did the game been with stuff that, that hadn't played together. Um, that's time to be kind of like kicking the tires on on lineups we haven't seen. Like maybe didn't we just learn in in the last round? Kind of pick your seven, ride with them, and I don't know if you're going to experiment. At least maybe try Grant or Hauser in there. Yeah, it, with the way that third quarter is going, that was like, oh yeah, let's let's try some double big with like a three point shooter defensively of Grant, or just like just throw it, it's. It's just weird to see things go that wrong and then them stick to what was the original game plan. Again, not adapting to when things are kind of unraveling there is was was jarring in this one. And I don't know. So it's like you look at this whole lineup here. Al, another tough three point shooting yeah. night. The Jalen six turnovers we already talked about, really smart. I mean, I don't think he went. He obviously had a great first half. Got a little Gosh. too involved so, shooting wise in this third quarter, but I, I don't like it's where. But credit Miami, they they right. they pretty much said, okay, Marcus gouged them in the first half. We're going to make him shoot, right? And you know, like that's the right it's strategy. And you got to be you got to be a little bit more committed to, to 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 finding ways to to exploit that in terms of just like either Marcus has got to make shots in those instances and get him out of it, um, or they got to work even harder to get good offense. But yeah, I just felt like. You knew Spolster would make good adjustments and can always kind of keep his team in there. Just wasn't the path I thought. I thought it would have to be really junky to to like take the Celtics out of it. And it didn't feel like they even had to resort to that. It was just, you know, the Celtics got in their own way and and couldn't get out of their own heads. All right. Well, we we turned a page to game two quickly on Friday. I mean, every other day um, set up here. So there's really... No, there, so the good thing for Joe is that he's going to spend 48 hours getting toasted and like Tatum yeah. will have to answer questions about disappearing after how good he was. But yeah, you know, it's like, it's right back into it. Um, it just comes down to being like a little bit better. And that's like, I hate that coach kind of speak. Um, but you know, that's, that's kind of what it is. Like both teams saw at various stretches, how they can be impactful. Like Celtics were really good at the end, that, that end of the first half stretch was as good offensively as they've been. And then it just completely went away in the fourth quarter when it mattered. And so, I don't know. How, how do you explain Tatum being no shots in the fourth quarter? Were you mad at going back and, and looking at that? I haven't looked at it fully. I mean, he did get six free throws, so it wasn't like he, he was getting shots. But the problem was, I think, A, Miami's smart in terms of how they're bothering him, and B, they're set, he was like asking himself these turnovers like it's like yeah. he doesn't he didn't find a good rhythm all game beyond getting to the line in a decent clip and but yeah that's a situation where he probably looks back at it and says like wait we scored 25 points and i didn't get an official like field goal attempt like how like how do i let that happen like what what can i do to like yeah we need to play through me and then i need to make the right pass but again just one assist for him last night too so it's like even when he was trying to make what was the right play he ended up you know coughing up in the process whether it's via travel or via a bad pass so it is i mean there's a story there's a story going back to the bubble with these guys it's like they like spo and the defensive weapons here kind of have some of the these guys numbers unless their foot is fully on the gas and they escaped by the skin of their teeth last conference finals with it and now you know, I think this this team, this game by Miami was probably better than any game we saw during last year's conference finals period. So mm. it's it's not as impressive personnel wise. Um, it's a shorter rotation, but ultimately it's guys playing better within it. And that's going to be a pretty tall task for these guys. So they can take advantage of his defense yeah. because like, I mean. Uh, the maddening part for me is watching like Max Strus just totally prevent Tatum from getting to the basket. I'm thinking, did I miss something? Is Mac Max Strus like lockdown defender now? So, uh, yeah, just spacing seemed off. Just 
their general disposition seemed off. And I do think you're right. Like turnovers happen and now you're kind of like second guessing everything. Jalen fell down early in that fourth quarter. Yep. A lot of bad bobbles. Like Tatum obviously had a couple and Jimmy's always lurking. And I don't know, just it's, 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 it's really just baffling how unglued they become at times. And, um, you know, usually they figure it out, but doesn't make it any less maddening in the moment. That's why you just keep saying it. Cause everyone's like, Oh, you, you, you know how this goes. Stop being so upset about it. And I'm, it's not that I'm upset. I'm not surprised. It's just like, man, they love making it difficult. And sometimes I wish they would just make their lives even slightly. Easier. And, and, uh, maybe in a future round. Probably not. Right now. We'll see. Game two. <laughs> they'll, they'll start at home game one. They'll, they'll, maybe they'll be punting on home court advantage and then be a finals if they get there. But for now, <laughs> the old season two. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let, let's finish on that. What the hell is going on at the Garden? For for what? For the Celtics. Like oh, how, for the Celtics? Like it, isn't it bad? Is, is the same imagine I mean, telling you 10 years ago that the Boston Celtics would be like whatever it is now, 10 and 10, 10 and 11 in 21 home games. Like, this place used to be invincible. It is, it is kind of nuts how far they've come on that front. And even during like the beginning of the Brad era of like those games where they got to the, they lost game seven at home versus LeBron, the Cavs there. Yeah. But before that, they like, I don't know if they lost a game at home that whole, that whole run before that game. So you're right. It is, it has come far for this group. But I think again, that maybe just like is a reflection of this team of like, if you're going to, take your foot off the gas you're going to probably be more inclined to do that at home this year because you have that mm. that the confidence that like oh yeah well it's our home floor we'll take care of this we'll we'll be able to get it back and and that's why they've i think i saw some stats where like they've lost more games as a favorite than any team in the nba this year so it's like that's kind of this team's i mean oh, i don't know so we're, i i is it a situation now where well, should Joe just like light him up before the game even starts? Just how like he yeah. has to, to counteract this. I mean, I again, I, I wish I could tell you. I like I don't think I don't think even if he comes up with that strategy, he's gonna do it because they're just set in their ways. But um, I don't know. He needs to lie to them. Tell them they're on the road, like take a plane, just, go circle out and then come back into Boston and just be like, Oh, we're in we're at FTX Arena now, or whatever the hell it's called, uh, and see what happens, or maybe we all dress up and boo them when they hit the floor. I don't know. <laughs> what whatever it takes to get this team to play. Uh, with a little bit more focus that it certainly has lacked. At home. I've got the yeah. answer. No. Yeah. Alternate court. Oh, the Celtics never have the alternate. Yes. Court. So, now you roll it out. Now you roll it out for all the playoff games. You know, what's funny is a couple of years ago, they had said they were going to do an alternate court with like the old school logo on it. And yep. it never came to fruition. And I never followed up and asked why that didn't happen. I assume it was like pandemic related, but um, yeah, maybe they, uh, sorry, Parquet, your, your time <laughs> is up. Right. Can we, can we just go can we get like some crazy design out there we've solved it b rob they, right, just, there it is. they need they need to enter the modern era um and the other bath they wore the white jerseys yesterday you know me i'm like big on the the jersey i didn't like green jerseys in game seven um and yet to lose in home whites i don't know i don't know nothing's going right here b rob well, Nothing, just, no, none, none of the karma the vibes everything is every, oh, 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 the vibes are not right right now and they need to be even though Jalen Brown has shifted the energy 74 times, he needs to shift it once again. <laughs> I shift it to a different gear, but no, I want to, you need to get those splits up there for like Jersey <laughs> colors. Like this is, this is becoming more and more like you keep track of that stuff better on your own. That needs to be part of the equation here going forward in this series. But Chris Forsberg, NBC sports, Boston, Celtics talk podcast. They'll be having those up after every game as well. We'll be back with you guys on the winning plays pod after Game two this weekend as things shift down to Miami and Ooh. and what is I think a make or break game two for the the season right now. I don't I don't see this group coming back from O2 if they don't get it done. So must win season already. Must win. Malcolm Brogdon called the must win game five. I guess he <laughs> he was made a liar during the Sixer series, but I'm calling it right now. This is a must win game two. So must win game two. I'm ready. Here we go. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening, guys. CLNS Media Celtics coverage is brought to you by FanDuel. New customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. 